Hi guys, Alex here. Uh, today I'm going to show you my process on how I make a leather belt designed to support the weight of a holster, be it a gun or anything heavy that you might want to put on your belt, something that's going to be rigid and not bend and flex to the weight of that item. Uh, stay tuned. So the first thing you want to do is get your belt measurement. Um, we're going to go to this hole, so it's about 37 inches. Uh, you just lay out your belt and measure it from the end of the buckle to the hole that you're going to be using. When I'm doing a holster belt, I like to use double layered leather. And when I'm starting out, I like to have, depending on the inch of the width of the belt you're trying to make, this is going to be an inch and a half belt. So I have one strap here that's an inch and three quarters, one that's going to be an inch and a half. And the reason I have it like that is so when I lay them on top of each other, there is some overlap here and I can just cut that away. I don't have to fight trying to line these up absolutely perfectly when they're coated in contact cement and want to stick together. So it just makes the whole process a lot easier having one of these straps be wider than the other. Okay, so I did a video prior how to make a belt. I'm not gonna go into a ton of those old details. Uh, watch that video if you're curious about some of the stuff I'm gonna be doing but I'm gonna set up the end of a smaller strap uh, just like a regular belt. Okay, so I have this end. Uh, I've got the little slot punch put in. I've got it skived down so it'll fold over nicely. What we're eventually gonna do is we're gonna take this strip here, we're gonna glue it down and sew it, and I'm gonna have it but right up basically to there. And I'm gonna be able to have that buckle sitting in there and fold it over, and this will fold over on top of two layers. So it's gonna be kind of bulky here. So as a result, we're gonna wanna thin down this layer here and probably come back a little bit and thin down that just a little bit, just to keep, reduce some of this bulk. Okay, so the next part of that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up the belt, like I'm gonna find where the holes are gonna be punched at, because I'm gonna need a certain measurement here and I'll show you what I need. The belt's gonna be made at 37 inches, so I'm gonna find 37 inches right there. And I am gonna punch, I'm not gonna punch, I'm just gonna mark a couple holes here. So now the holes for 37 inches are going to be marked. Now what I want is I want to find how long between this part here and this area up to these holes what this distance is because what we're going to do is we're going to try to insert a strip of this aluminum. Uh, we're going to cut it down to about three quarters of an inch That'll give me some space on each side of this belt so I can sew. And it'll provide a lot of rigidity and strength to the belt. So we're gonna have to mark this out, cut it out with 10 snips, glue it down. All right, so to find this measurement, I know I don't wanna, I'm gonna have to punch through here to put in either snaps, rivets, or Chicago screws, or so, either way. I don't want metal in this area. So we're gonna wanna measure from past here. I don't want to punch a hole through steel up here, so we're going to come back about an inch. I have my wing divider set at three quarters of an inch. Just drag them across there, it'll leave a line dark enough that I can see. And now we're just going to take our 10 snips and snip down that line. careful while you're doing this because these edges are all very sharp.
thing I'm going to want to do is just kind of round off these corners here just to get rid of a sharp snag inside of my leather pieces as much as possible. It's not going to be able to be perfect, at least not with these tools. This is what I got. I got this from Home Depot. It was like $20, between $15 and $20. It's just some really thin aluminum. Uh, you want it to be thin enough that it's going to be able to wrap around the body and not break or give you trouble with that. And also come back to a, an unwrapped form, but also thick enough that it helps you out in some way. I don't know if this is going to be thick enough with one piece, so I did two. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how many we need. Okay, I'm gonna just punch the end of this belt. You could have done it before this or after. I just want to get the tail out of my way. And now that we have this tail, we can make a keeper off of it. All right, so next up we are gonna glue down our metal strips and then we're gonna glue our leather pieces together. I don't have my holes punched yet because I wanna do that after I get my leather put together. So in order to know exactly where I wanna glue, I'm just gonna fold this down and I'm gonna know that because of how I took my measurement. I'm gonna lay that piece of metal down right there. And then laying the metal down to here, and I come back this way. I know that if I start gluing about here, I'm gonna miss the holes. And it's not a huge deal if you get glue up where the holes are. It just isn't necessary at this time. So first we're gonna put down the metal. Okay, so I've got both of these glued down. Uh, I got the strips of aluminum glued in where I want them. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna Put it on there. This is the wider piece, so I don't have to be as careful. Stick it right there. And I just want to run it down. Making sure everything adheres. Okay, so as you can see down here towards the end, got a little off track and that's okay because we used a wider piece. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to trim off the edges here and I'm gonna hit them on the edge sander. All right, so I got this cut off. Uh, it is not perfect. There's just a couple spots right here where it kind of extends past a little bit. There's some glue poking out. So time to go to the edge sander.
All right, now we're just gonna edge. So one thing you want to do when you glue is uh, glue gets on surfaces you don't want. Just take this eraser here. You can get these at pretty much any leather store and it takes the glue right off. All right, so next step is just burnishing. And like I showed you in previous videos, just get some burnishing agent on the edges here and go to town with your canvas. get these edges nice and slicked over. Just like this, we'll work on these edges until we get the whole thing how we like it. All right. Okay, so the belt edge is burnished. Now we're gonna sew it on the machine here. Logan, what color of thread do you wanna use? What colors are they? Right there. So it's black. Black? Yes. All right. Two dots there to center on. Put the heel of the teardrop right into there. Sure, it looks good. All right, next task is to make a keeper. Um, I like to use a keeper half the width of the belt. So inch and a half belt, we're gonna use an inch and three quarter keeper. Okay, so what you're gonna wanna do is wrap the leather where the keeper's gonna be. Keeper's gonna go underneath of here, so I'm not worried about that. I just know the keeper's gonna be about right here. And we're gonna find out how wide it needs to be, or how long. Right to the edge here. So 
if I cut it right about there, that'd be plenty wide. Bring it back. Yep. like this. Now I will hand sew this together. First we're actually going to burnish it. Alright, so now we have the keeper. It is made and sewn. What I'm going to do is I'm going to punch the holes and we're going to secure this belt with Chicago screws. So to help me out with that, I'm actually going to cut just a little piece of double-sided sticky tape. I'm going to flip it over. And I'm just going to stick it down. And we're going to fold this over. Just like if there was a belt in there. And keep it stuck down. This way it's not going to move on me. And I'll lay my keeper down, I'll just kind of see how it looks. Put it right about there. Take my centering tool. Put a hole there. And one about there. I'll go through and secure just like that. So now we can get this tape off of here. It's no longer necessary. I'm going to use this belt buckle from Buckle Guy. Solid brass. And it is the T1002 one and a half inch nickel mat heel bar buckle. Put the keeper on first. With the Chicago screws, I like to use a little bit of Loctite on them. both in there and voila the belt has been completed what do you think Logan looks good this is Logan my little brother home from the Navy this belt is his Christmas present Logan wants to go ahead and try it on He wants to be a Texas gunslinger, so he needed a holster belt. There we go. Oh yeah, look at that. Think that'll support the weight of a pistol? Definitely, it's very sturdy. Good. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone.
Wave bye-bye, Logan.